Uh, lots of sleepy folks today. Yeah, no, no, okay. Lots of sleepy this morning. I'm wide awake now. I've been up like almost three hours or something, two and a half hours at least. So, and uh, obviously these are, are AI generated or drawn because some of them look a little creepy. I don't see much of a difference between two and three, quite honestly. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that that number seven great one looks a little creepy, as well as the number one mad one. So, all right, well, we got fours, fives, and sixes in here, which is that's fine. It's a good place to be. At least we're not annoyed or mad or anything. Uh, yeah, seven. I don't know. I'm probably a six myself. I don't know that I'm uh, all smiley, happy, great. But uh, maybe I'll get there before the day's out. But in honor of President's Day yesterday, I had this Abraham Lincoln graphic today. So I wanted to, I wanted to play with that a little bit today. So welcome to class, everybody. Welcome. Glad to have you here today. Oh, let's see. Make sure I'm up on the right hour. This is fifth hour. 21. This is a big class. 21 in here. So we're still missing a few that are so sleepy they haven't logged in yet. But that's all right. They'll get there. So. I didn't make it to the movies this weekend. I saw the new Bob Marley film, One Love. So it was good. It's a good movie. I didn't know much about Bob Marley. He was a 70s guy. I did, I was in grade school. I didn't pay much attention to music in the 70s. Uh, I paid attention in the 80s and learned a lot of 70s music later on. But Bob Marley just wasn't one of the ones that I really identified with or uh, got to know much about. So I learned some stuff about the movie. So the movie was good. I've seen previews for it for like six months. They were really promoting this one. So uh, hopefully it'll do well to pay back all that promotion they've spent on it. But good film. And at the end, in the credits at the end, they show videos from the real Bob Marley. So you get to see the robot. And then, then you learn, if you didn't already know, you learned that the actor they hired to portray Bob Marley is a lot better looking than the real Bob Marley. Yeah, the actor's a good looking dude. Uh, the real Bob Marley, not so much. You know, not 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 such an attractive fellow. But uh, you know they want to they want to sell tickets, so they have a, a good looking dude in the movie playing Bob Marley. It it was good though. So, all right, how are how are matrices going here? Enjoying doing things with a matrix, a little different, a little different. Uh, I, I noticed a lot of you guys are doing great grade wise with the matrix stuff. And, uh, you know, if you had one that you struggled with, you can go back and redo it and turn it in again. I'll raise the grade. But most of you guys are getting very high grades to start with, with the matrix stuff. And uh, I'm working on, I got a lot to grade. I was out Friday in Little Rock and uh, you guys turned in a bunch of stuff this weekend. And all of my classes have a lot of stuff that had to be graded by hand. So I'm behind on grading. I will get the grade book updated before advisory. But that may not include stuff that I have to hand grade. Anything that Buzz has got graded or it's in Buzz, I'll make sure and get that into the uh, eSchool. But otherwise, uh, stuff I got to have grade, I'll have it done by Thursday because Thursday is parent teacher conferences. Parent teacher conferences this Thursday. So I look forward to uh, seeing parents. If you guys join your parents, I'd love to see you in person again. So uh, parent teacher conferences, I will have all the grades done by Thursday of all the stuff that I have to grade. Uh, so we'll get that in there. Let's take a look at our curriculum today. Continuing our matrix unit here. Fifth hour. All right, let's go to fifth hour right here. Go to our grade screen as usual. See, so of course, module five is done. If you're still missing anything on module five, get it in soon. Especially with parent-teacher conferences coming up this week. Get that stuff turned in before you forget it. Um, week 24 should be done. That was last week's intro to matrices. You had the uh, dimensions and the elements and the represent linear systems. All right, so that was last week. This week is week 25, and we just have a couple of things that have to be turned in. So let's go look at week 25. See what all the... So I'm going to close the week 24 folder. Let's clean that up a little bit. 
as you get those weeks done, close that, and make it simpler to see. So, okay. So we just have week 24, week 25, and a quiz. So looking at week 25, we have uh, elementary matrix row operations. And inside there, there's a lesson and an assignment. And then we have the row echelon form in Gaussian elimination. Uh, and that has just a lesson. And then we have a matrix quiz one. So we have a quiz this week that over last week and this week. And then one assignment to turn in this week. So let's go look first at the matrix row operations lesson. Have you guys ever seen So click on the link. It'll take us over here to Khan Academy. Again, before I go on, if you haven't started matrices, and most of you have, there's a few that have it, uh, be sure to go to starting the matrix unit to make sure you have joined my class. You know, click on that fifth hour link right there and make sure that you've joined my Khan Academy class because you need to be logged in. Make sure you're logged in when you get here. It should have your name up in the corner when you get to Khan Academy. So if you're not logged in, log in. It will, it will help keep track of everything you've done in here as well if you forget to copy and paste something. All right, let's look at matrix row operations. And... I've already got the chat going today, so I'll be putting things in the chat for you guys to participate in. All right, the following table summarizes the three elementary matrix row operations. So here's the three things that we're going to play with. We could switch any two rows in a matrix. All right, if we have two, five, three, three, four, six, we could switch that and we could do three, four, six, two, five, three. That's fine. It doesn't affect anything, it'll still work the same. Uh, see, interchange row one and two. We could just do that. Or we can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. We can't multiply by zero. We're not trying to get rid of a row. But let's say we took the first row and we multiply it by three. So it's three times two and three times five and three times three. So it's two, two, five, three. It becomes six, 15, nine. And notice we don't do anything to the second row. We just multiplied row one becomes three times itself. Another thing we could do is we could add two rows together. Row one stays the same, two, five, three, but the second row becomes the total of rows one and two. So instead of three, four, six, we're going to take two plus three, make that five, five plus four, and make that nine, and three plus six, make that nine. So that's the three things that we're going to be doing with matrices in this lesson. So these are used to solve systems of equations. But let's look at these. All right. Switching any two rows. This is how they write it. Perform the row operation, row one, and then double arrows, arrows pointing both ways, row two. And that means take row one and row two and switch places. So if the matrix originally looks like this, Four, eight, three, two, four, five, seven, one, two. And then we change that. Now it's two, four, five, four, eight, three, seven, one, two. Notice the seven, one, two is still the seven, one, two. Nothing changed on the bottom. We just took the first and second rows and we replaced them. Oh, if anyone sees Miss Hartwell today, it's her birthday. So my phone just reminded me. All right. Sometimes we'll see this not notation used. Here's the original matrix. And it says row one and row two are replaced. And so here's the new matrix. And you can see they just simply took the numbers and switched places. The third row stays exactly the same. All right, so here's a problem for us. So I'll be looking in the chat, see what you guys give us answers. Perform the row operation R2, double arrows, R3 on the following matrix. So what numbers are going to go on the top row? Okay. If we perform this row operation, R2, double arrow, R3, right. on this three by three matrix, what numbers are we putting on the front row? So Leo says take the third row and put it as the first row. Ah, Leo's correcting it now. Yeah, let's pay attention. 
that says take the second row and the third row and replace them. That means nothing happens to the first row. The first row is seven to nine. So what's the second row going to be now? Leo's already been on top of it there. Anyone agree with Leo or is Bethany's with it. She says, yep. Whatever the third row is becomes the second row because it tells us to swap those here. So the third row was 1, 3, 12. So now that's the second row. And the second row moves down to be the third row because that's what they ask us to do in this row operation. Check it. Good job. Next question. All right. How about this one? Perform the row operation R3, double arrow, R1. What are we going to put it on the first row? And then you hit new sign. Yours might be different. Like, so what is the first row? Really far back. All right. Got a couple of folks chiming in. And like, a lot of these have three farms and a, a weird, like, seal. Like, I may have a lot of folks that left my class. But I can see some of you. Some of you uh, don't see, and you've you've disappeared from the chat. Let's see, I'm seeing zero, negative four, and 10. That's what people are putting in there. What about the second row of our matrix? What is that going to be? Leo says seven to 18. Arabella says it stays what it is now. Nice, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, it didn't say to do anything with the second row, so it just remains the same. It did not mention the second row. So now the third row and the first row changing places means, yeah, we have to put the two and the 11 and the negative five in there. Check that. Hey, we're good. All right, let's practice the second one, multiplying a row by a non-zero constant. All right, so perform the row operation 3R2, and there's an arrow that says that becomes the new R2. So if we look at the sample using this matrix, 6612304593, 3 R2, arrow R2, means replace the second row with three times itself. So the first row and the third row are unchanged. It didn't say to do anything with those. So they stay exactly the same, 661459. But the second row, which was 230, is now every element is multiplied by three. Three times two, three times three, and three times zero. So instead of two, three, zero, it is now six, nine, zero. Multiplied the second row times three and left it as the second row. All right, so let's practice this one now. Perform this row operation, two R1, arrow R1. So two times row one becomes the new row one. So what's row one going to be now? We've got our matrix of two, six, five, one, seven, four, eight, zero. If we perform this operation of two times row one becomes row one, so what do you got for this one? Okay, Leo says, is it 4, 12, 10, 2? Is that the new row one? Alec agrees with that. He says the same numbers. Yeah, if we're taking two times row one, and it's becoming row one, so it's staying row one, but we just double everything because we take it all times two. Four times two, I mean, two times two is four, six times two is 12, five times two is 10, and one times two is two. And nothing happened to the second row, so it just stays what it was. All right, great job. Let's try the next question. This one's a little different. We got a three by two. And it says do negative five row three. So negative five times row three 
and replace row three with that new numbers. So notice the first one is unchanged because it didn't say to do anything with the first row. It didn't say to do anything with the second row. So we'll leave the second row alone. But Bethany's already on top of this one. If we take negative three times negative five, positive 15. If we take six times negative five, negative 30. Let's check and see if that's right. Perfect. And if, if you go back and you're looking at this and you don't understand it, here's the explanation. You click that and it tells you what to do. This means replace the third row with negative five times itself. Negative three times negative five. Negative five times negative times positive six. All right. And here's the last thing that we're practicing. Add one row to another. So if this says R1 plus R2 replaces R2, and we start with this matrix, the first row still stays the first row because it did not say replace the first row. So we take the first row and it's still two, three, four. The second row, it told us to replace that with row one plus row two. So we take two plus zero. We take three plus eight. We take four plus one. So the new second row becomes two, 11, and five. Notice the first row stays the same because it did not say to do anything about replacing that. We're only replacing the second one. All right, so let's practice that now. Oh, and then we have a challenge problem down here. Woo, challenge problem. All right, let's do this first. Perform the row operation. Row one plus row three replaces row three. Okay, row one, it did not say to replace row one. So we'll leave row one as it is. Row two isn't even mentioned, so we'll leave it as it is. So what's the new row three? So it's to add row one and row three together and replace row three with that new numbers. So I'm seeing six, eight, negative one from a couple of folks. So negative one plus seven, the first row plus the third row. That would be a six. Six plus two. That would be an eight. Negative two plus a positive one. So now we're only a negative one. Check. Ah, very good. So I need another one of these. This one says take row two and row three, add them together, and replace row two. So row one stays the same, negative four, 12, nine. And row three stays the same. So let's go do that, one, five, 10. But row two is being replaced by row two plus row three. You guys are on this. Eight plus nine and 12. Eight, nine, and 12. Just adding those two numbers together. Row two and row three. All right, let's look at this challenge problem they've given us. Perform the row operation. Row one plus two times row three becomes the new row one. Ooh. Getting tricky. So the new row one is going to be what? No, oh, thank you. My button got hit there. Okay, so row one is negative five, seven, and three. All right, and up here it says row one plus two times row three replaces row one. So two times row three. Row three is eight, eight, and negative six. So if we take all those times two, eight times two, eight times two, 
negative 6 times 2. It says to take row 1 and add that to it. So we're going to add these to row 1. Negative 5 plus 16. Negative 5 plus 16. 3 plus negative 12. So negative 5 plus 16 is 11. 7 plus 16 is 23. 3 plus a negative 12. So this should be our new row 1. Because it says take this. Up here it says replace row 1. 11, 23, 23. negative 9. Now, it didn't say to do anything with the other rows, so they should still be the same. It didn't say to replace those. It said only replace the first row. So let's check. All right, that's how you do it. Follow what it says there. All right. Now we're going to talk about an augmented matrix because we're going to, we're going to use some of these operations in an augmented matrix. So before we talked about, let me see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on paper too. Um, let's see, if we have, I'm going to make up a different one. There. So if we have this system of equations, system of linear equations, we can turn that into an augmented matrix. This is the X column, right? This is the X's. Two and one. That's that's the coefficients. So this is the y column. Coefficient is four on the first equation, and the coefficient is negative three. And then we can do this little bitty line right here. I'm just gonna kind of make it a, a dash line. And that means really that we have an equal sign. And I'll put the six and the negative seven. So this is the constant, all right? Just the number. When we add this little line to show where the equal sign is, this is called an augmented matrix. So here, when we work with that, we can do any of those operations that we did above, right? So if we have this system of equations with the augmented matrix that represents it, we could swap the rows. It doesn't matter if we write these system of equations in this order or if we reverse it and change the order. That's why we can do that to the matrix. We can swap the rows, just write them in a different order. It's still equivalent. It doesn't matter. Uh, multiplying the row by a non-zero constant. So in this, looking back at the one I have here, if we multiply this by negative 2, plus 6y equals 14, these two equations are still equal to each other. I just took this one and I multiplied it by negative two. But since I multiplied both sides of the equal sign, it's just still equal to each other. Negative two x plus six y would equal 14 because x minus three y equals negative seven. And I just multiply it by negative two. So that's why we can do that to any one of these rows. We can multiply it by a, a negative two or something. It doesn't change what x and y equals. So they multiplied theirs by negative two to change the equation. That's fine. And then adding one row to another. We can also do that. When we when we solve linear equations, that's what we usually do. Remember, we would have a negative 2x and add a 2x to it to make the x disappear, where that would just leave us with a y. y equals negative four. That's how we solve. That's one of the methods we used to solve linear equations. So we can certainly do that with a matrix. So you might see these different operations. If we were trying to solve this, 2, 2, 10, negative 2, negative 3, 3, first thing we do is like, okay, let's subtract a row. Actually, let me step through it on the problem that I have right here because I'll show you why we're doing this. All right. So let's go back to the original matrix I had right here. 2, 4, 6, 1, negative three, negative seven. 
All right, there's my augmented matrix. And I'm trying to solve this for X and Y. All right, the X and the Y are the constant. What I'd like to get is just having, what does X equal? What X with no Ys equals something. In the other row, I don't want any X's. I want one Y and I want it to equal something. So I want my matrix to look like this. So that way, this is just X, no Y's, and it equals whatever. And this would be no X's, but one Y equals. So then I'd have the solution. If I could get my matrix to be one X and one Y with no other variable in the same line. So how can I do that with this? All right, well, the first thing I should try to do is to get a one right here. So one thing I could do to get a one right here instead of a two is, well, let me subtract the rows. So if the first thing I do, I'm going to take row two, subtract, no, no, I'm going to take row one. I can do it now. Row one minus row two, and I'll replace row one. Okay. Row one minus row two and replace row one. So row one now becomes... 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus a negative 3 becomes a 7. 6 minus a negative 7 becomes a 13. And I didn't do anything to the second row. Okay, so this operation got me to have just a 1. I'm, I'm trying to get just a 1. That's, that's a good start. I just try to get a 1 there and a 1 there and then get the answer so here now i need a zero over here a zero so let's see how could i make a zero in the second column am i doing the same thing i did last time when i saw this eh, i did a little differently All right. Okay, so I could take row one minus row two again. Right? I can do the same thing and just replace row two this time. So if I do row one and subtract row two and replace row two this time, right, doing that. One minus one is zero. So let's see, I'm not doing anything to the first row this time. The one minus one is zero. I'm replacing row two. Seven minus negative three. 13 minus negative seven. All right, I'm closer now. Because now I've got the one zero. So the X column is done. The X column is done. Now I've got to get the Y column. So I need to change this matrix to where this now is a 1. So let's just multiply this. Let's do uh, row. Oh, let me put the number at front. I'm going to multiply 1 tenth times row 2 and replace row 2. So the first row doesn't change because I didn't do anything to it. But what's zero times one tenth? If you multiply by one tenth, that's like dividing by ten, right? Well, that's still a zero. Ten times one tenth is one. Twenty times one tenth is two. Oh, I'm getting closer again. Now I've got the one and the one. But I have this seven that I need to be a zero. So if I take row one and i subtract seven times row two and make that the new row one so this is that like the challenge question we had we're going to take row one we're going to multiply row two times seven and subtract it from row one 
And that'll become the new row one. So seven times zero. So one minus seven times zero. So this still stays a one. Remember the bottom row didn't change. Bottom row didn't change. So one minus seven times zero is still one. Seven minus seven times row two. Seven times one. Seven minus seven. 13 minus seven times row two. Seven times two is 14. So 13 minus 14 is minus one. And now we have the solution. Because this is the X, this is the Y, and this is the constant. So if we turn these back into equations, what is this? We have one X, no Y's, and it equals negative one. We have no X's, we have one Y, and it equals two. That is the solution to this original systems of equation. Two X plus four Y equals six, X minus three Y equals seven. Let's check that. 2x plus 4y equals 6. Well, if this is what it, the solution is, 2 times negative 1, since that's what x is, plus 4 times 2, since that's what y equals 6. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 4 times 2 is 8. And... It does equal six. So that works for the first equation. What about the second one? X minus three Y equals negative seven. Well, if X is negative one minus three times two, because Y is two, does that equal negative seven? Negative one minus Three times two, minus six. Negative seven equals negative. So yes, this is the solution. We solve this linear equation using matrices. Just trying to manipulate the matrices where we had a one zero and then got the zero one in the other column and got to our answer. Oh, yeah. Joey was pointing out that Khan Academy says the assignment's due June 2nd. That's because on Khan Academy, if I put it to due Sunday, it will close it Sunday night. So if you're late and, and wait to do it Monday, Khan Academy says, nope, sorry, can't do it anymore. It's done. So I just put it way at the end of the semester. So if, if you're too busy this week and you need to do it next week, it'll still be open. So on Khan Academy, I just put the end of the semester. So don't let that mess you up. Use the due dates that's in Buzz or the due dates in Google Classroom. It's due this Sunday. But I didn't want Khan Academy to close it down where you can't access it. All right. Uh, let's see. I do want to show you one other thing with matrices. Then we'll go back to the Buzz on look at this. There's one other thing we can do with matrices, which we will see on this week's assignment on the quiz. If we have two matrices that are the same size, that's kind of important. We can add them together. We'll get into this a little bit more later, but we can add these together. But here's the important part. If I'm gonna add these matrices together, well, first of all, they have to be the same size. They're both two by twos. So I add the same elements together. This is element one, one. This is all about one, one. First row, first column. So that's one plus zero, which equals one, right? Then, let me do this. this way. First row, second column. First row, second column. 2 plus 7 or 9. Second row, first column. 
4 plus 9, that becomes 13. And the second row, second column, 7 plus negative 2 or 5. So we can add these two together and we get this. Add these two together. So there's going to be a problem on the quiz this week. So I'm giving you a preview. Does this make sense? You understand this? I hope so, because let's say you have a problem like this. One, three, five, seven, plus two, four, X and eight equals Uh, let's see, three Y, 10 and 15. What's X, what's Y? That's a two, I'm gonna try to make that as clear as I can there. If I can add those together, because they are the same size. Bethany says X equals five and Y equals seven. Anyone else agree with that? Mm -hmm. Are you got a different answer? Leo agrees. Yeah, X is right there. Y is right there. Sure. Good job, guys. One plus two is three. Three plus four is seven. Over here, you got five plus something is 10, and seven plus eight is 15. Well, five plus, well, it's got to be five. If it's going to equal 10. So don't let that confuse you. You see that on the quiz. You just add those together. What's the answer? You'll see something like that on the quiz. Let you know. All right. Okay, we've looked at all that. Let's go back. Let's go back to Buzz. Uh, that was starting the unit. Yeah, don't forget to join the class. Uh, so we look at matrix row operations. Here's the assignment to go with matrix row operations. When you click on that, just as a reminder for you guys, it'll take you to the four practice problems. I can close that. Take row two, add three times row one and replace row two, right? So you'll do all of this and you'll do four problems. Oh, I'm on problem two because I already did problem one yesterday and they kept track of that. When you finish these, that's when you take a screenshot. At the end, when it tells me, good job, you got four out of four or three out of four. I got three out of four, maybe I'll go back and do it again. Maybe I'll start over. Maybe I'll start and do it again. But I'll take my screenshot. And I'll say, okay, here's my screenshot. You see, I got four out of four. I'll go back here. And remember, you have to scroll down. Scroll down and paste your screenshot. There's my screenshot. It says I got four out of four, and I'm going to submit it. Paste your screenshot in that box. And then you're done with that. Okay. Here's the only other thing I got besides the quiz. We're going to look at this one video, Solving Linear Systems with Matrices. He is going to do this just like I did over to here. When I took these two and we stepped through to try to get to that 1001. Zero, zero, one, that's what he's doing, so don't get confused by that. It's the same type of thing what I'm trying to do. It's just giving you another example of it. Okay, here we go. 
figure it never hurts getting as much practice as possible solving systems of linear equations. So let's solve this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it using an augmented matrix. And I'm going to put it in row, reduced row echelon form. So what's the augmented matrix for this system of equations? Three unknowns with three equations. So it'll be, I'll just have to do the coefficients. So the coefficients of the x terms are just 1, 1, 1. Coefficients of the y terms are 1, 2, and 3. Coefficients of the z terms are 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. And let me show that it's augmented. And then they equal 3, 0, 3, 0, and minus 2. Now I want to get this augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. So the first thing, I have a 1 a leading 1 here. That's a pivot entry. Let me make everything else in that column equal to a 0. So let me, so I'm not going to change my first row. So it'll just be a 1, a 1, a 1, and then my dividing line. And then I have a 3. Now to make to 0 this out, let me just replace the second row with the first row minus the second row. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 is 1 minus 2. Actually, a better thing to do, because I eventually want this to be a 1 anyway. Let me replace this row with this row with the second row minus the first row, instead of the first row minus the second row. I can do it either way. So the, first, the second row minus the first row. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And then 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Now, I want to also 0 this out. So let me replace this guy with this equation minus that equation. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 minus 1 is 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. Minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. Fair enough. So I got my pivot entry here. I have another pivot entry here. It's to the right of this one, which is what I want for reduced row echelon form. Now I need to target this entry and that entry. I need to zero them out. So let's do it. So we get, so I'm, not, I'm going to keep my second row the same. My second row is 0, 1, 2, and then I have a minus 3, and the augmented part of it. And to zero this guy out, what I can do is I can replace the first row with the first row minus the second row. So I get 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1, there's a bird outside. Let me close my window. So where was I? I'm, re I'm replacing the first row with the first row minus the second row. So 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. No, I don't want to make it. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And then 3 minus minus 3. So that's equal to 3 plus 3. So that's equal to 6. Right? 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, negative 1. And then 3 minus negative 3, that's 6. I always want to make sure I don't make a careless mistake. Now let me get rid of this entry right here. Let me zero that out. So let me replace the third row with the third row minus 2 times the second row. So we have 0 minus, well, 2 times 0. That's just going to be 0. 2 minus 2 times 1. That's 2 minus 2. That's 0. 3 minus 2 times 2. That's 3 minus 4, or minus 1. And then finally, minus 5 minus 2 times minus 3. Let me write that down. Minus 5 minus 2 times minus 3. That's minus 5 minus minus 6. That's minus 5 plus 6 is equal to 1. I really wanted to make sure I didn't make a careless mistake there. So that is equal to 1. So I'm almost done, but I'm still not in reduced row echelon form. This has to be a positive 1 in, in order to get there. It can't be anything other than a 1. That's just the style of reduced row echelon form. And then these guys up here have to be zeroed out. Well, the easy thing to do, let me just multiply this equation by minus 1. So then this becomes a plus 1, and then that becomes a minus 1. And then I just need to zero out these two guys up here. So let's do it. So my equation, I'm going to keep my third row the same. My third row is now 0, 0, 1, minus 1. 
0, 0, 1, minus 1. And now I want to 0 this guy out. So what I can do is I could set my first row equal to my first row plus my last row. Because if these two add up, they're going to be equal to 0. So what do I get? 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. 6 plus minus 1 is 5. Now I want to 0 this row out. And to 0 this row out, what I can do is I'll replace it with the, middle, with the second row minus 2 times the first row. Right? So 0 minus 2 times 0 is just 0. 1 minus 2 times 0 is just 1. 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. Minus 3 minus 2 times negative 1. Let me write that down. Minus 3 minus 2 times minus 1. Don't want to make a careless mistake. So what is that equal to? This is equal to minus 3 minus 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 2, or minus 3 plus 2, which is equal to minus 1. So that's equal to minus 1. And now I have my augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form. My pivot entries are the only entries in their columns. They're each pivot entry in, in each successive rows to the right of the pivot entry before it. And actually, I have no free variables. Every column has a pivot entry. So let's take, go back from the augmented matrix world and kind of put back our variables there. So what do we get? We get x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 5. That's that row right there. We get 0x plus 1y plus 1y plus 0z is equal to minus 1. That's that row right there. And then finally, we have 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to minus 1. That's that row right there. And just like that, we've actually solved our system of three equations with three unknowns. That's the solution right there. I just wrote it in this way, just so you see it corresponding. But obviously, I could have written them closer to their equal sign. So hopefully, you found that vaguely useful. All right. So the reduced row echelon form is about is where we make it all ones and zeros. The variables, the x, the y, the z, those are all ones and zeros in reduced row echelon form. Now the constant column over on the right side, that can be whatever it needs to be. But the reduced row echelon has was just ones and zeros, and there's only one one on each row. All right, let's look at the quiz, and then I'll let you guys go. So let me put this up on the screen so you can see what you're doing for the quiz. Remember, you can go back to any of those matrix lessons we just looked at and go through those examples yourself to make sure you understand it. Before you take the quiz, the quiz, oh, let me back up real quick and show you this. Uh, the quiz will give you more than one attempt. It says attempt zero out of three. So it's our automatically set to let you have two retakes if you bomb it. All right, I wanted to show you this because it says, what are the dimensions of this matrix? Ignore all this gobbledygook on the second row, that long line of stuff. That's what I have to type in to make it display this matrix. Beginning, matrix, enter all these numbers. And so ignore that line. Just look at the matrix itself. You know, look at the, this is, you know, the rows and the columns. So what's the dimensions of this matrix? There's your choices. What is the three comma two element in this matrix? How would you write this systems of equations as a matrix? Multiple choice. There's four different matrices. Uh, perform this row operation. If you take row one plus four times row three and replace row three with this matrix, which one of these four matrices is correct? And then here's that one I promised you was going to be on the quiz. What's X? What's Y? Now I did it with a two by two. They're doing it with a four by three. But what's X? It still works just as simple. They're just adding these two together. So the same size, they can do that. All right, that's it, guys. You got the one assignment and then the one quiz this week. So all together, that's 
That's five different things we've done in matrices. Three last week, this week. I see a lot of high scores on this. If you don't do well on that, go back and do it again. If you don't get four out of four on the practice problems they give you on Khan Academy, go back and do it again. You can replace that. You know, give me your best score that you want to count in buzz, what you want to count in hack. So uh, these are these are easier points than a lot of else we're doing. I'm seeing a lot of people scoring high on this that don't always score high on other assignments. So this is hopefully a unit that can help raise your grade because matrices are not hard. They're just different. We don't work with them a whole lot. So take your time. Do well with this. Go just butcher those matrices up and pull out all the info that you need out of that. Do well with that. So. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to uh, to let you go, I guess, because we don't have anything new. If you want to if you want to hang around, if you got questions, I'm happy to have you hang around. And uh, otherwise, I'll give you the last half hour to you could probably finish up the matrices and be done with for this week. So have a great week, guys. <laughs>